Hello everyone, William Oaks here with Pegasus Technology Solutions. Today I'm going to give you a demo of how to create service and location pages in ZimWriter using ZimWriter, N8N, Airtable, and a WordPress plugin called Page Generator Pro. Now what Page Generator Pro is going to allow us to do is take a template that's built in Gutenberg, Elementor, or pretty much any other page builder for WordPress, and it's going to allow us to map our columns to pretty much any section of the template. So for an example, when we go to Airtable and we look at the name, we have AC installation. What we're going to be able to do with the template is we're going to be able to put in curly brackets name. And then when it's actually going through and creating the pages, it's just going to take AC installation and use that as our title. And that will work for pretty much any section of the website. So what we're going to do as far as this content is we're going to build about 30 pages. We're not going to automate the home page about us page or the contact or the blog section. The blogs will be automated using ZimWriter or our custom Airtable tool. We're only gonna focus on the service pages and the service area, which is pretty much gonna be our locations. So as far as configuring ZimWriter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up some custom prompts. Now, as soon as the next version is released, it will have, I believe, raw prompting so we're going to be able to do the CP service page and a little bit more background information for that service page. This pretty much doesn't work very well as it stands right now for the CP service page. We're pretty much trying to get the text to be a little bit more salesy and a little bit more targeted for homeowners. Now for these prompts, these are extremely important on the CP20 and the CP30. And essentially what we're just doing is say, hey, please only write X amount of words in this text. And the reason that's important is when we look at these subheadings, if this had 20 and this had 40, well, it's going to make it all look lopsided and the page is not going to be aesthetically pleasing. And it's not going to be very good for when we deliver the website to the client. And the client's probably not going to be happy as far as when homeowners are browsing especially when they're on the computer versus their cell phone. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our custom outlines. I've included a couple examples, and I'll also add an example for location pages when I release this, and I'll put it in all in the description. Make sure you set up your SERP, and this is kind of what your overall settings are going to look like. Um, so essentially what you're going to be able to do is, I'm just going to copy this right here, and we jump into ZimWriter, and it looks like I already have it, but we'll just add it again. So for our SERP scraping, I have Waterville Main. I set up a style. Now this is what the custom outline looks like. VAR2 can help homeowners with VAR1 and VAR3. And it's just going to jump through those custom bars for every single new line in the bulk writing. And when you're doing the location pages, you can actually just switch and go to the location pages. Now, when we jump into our custom prompts, essentially all you're gonna do is add the prompts. So please only write 20 words in this text. Make sure you disable the conclusion and the skinny paragraphs. I recommend having for your H2 short and for the FAQs, make sure it's short answers. It really probably doesn't matter which model you use. When I'm writing most stuff, I use GPT-4. For this example, it doesn't really matter. I'll just use 3.5. I enable automatic keywords, and you really don't need anything else. Just start the bulk writer, and it's gonna write that content for you. Now, I pretty much already wrote all the content out, and this is what we get back. This is technically what we get back. So when we jump over the workflow, make sure everything's uploaded. All right, so we have all our files in Google Drive. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into our workflow and I'm just gonna say test workflow. And essentially all we're doing is we're running our workflow manually. So what this is doing is it's loading all the files we have in Google Drive and then it's gonna loop. So it's only gonna select one file at a time. It's gonna load that specific file. It's gonna convert it into a binary file, meaning that we can actually take that text and edit it. So this right here, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna kind of split those first several lines. So right here, you see add instructions. This is pretty much gonna remove everything until I believe the mid journey prompt. So what it's gonna look like when it's done is this is pretty much what the file is gonna look like. And the next code part is pretty much gonna take every single line and then it's gonna take um, every hashtag and it's gonna split those into every single heading. No, that's the wrong workflow. So this is pretty much um, the code that does that for us. And as you can see, it's already splitting everything into headings and content. 
So when we look at our set fields, this one takes a little bit to load. So a lot of information. This is what it's going to look like. And then it's automatically going to insert that information into Airtable, and then it's going to loop to the next file. So when we go into Airtable, essentially we already have all these files loaded. This came from pretty much different tools, but we also have an SEO analysis tool that we have when we're doing the content. That is an n 8 n workflow. And what that's doing is pretty much figuring out our search intent and stuff like that. Well, there we go. So that stuff is pretty much already done in the system. And now when we look at our content overview, let's see, I know some of this is already filled. There we go. So this is pretty much what it's doing. Um, it's adding each file into a new row in Airtable. So we have plumbing, our service page is generated, and then it's splitting everything into new rows or into a row and based on all the columns that we have defined. And as I said before, each column can match a new section into that page generator pro template, which is going to save you a lot of time when you're building out all of these pages. Um, for example, by the time we're done this workflow, I think probably writing or adding the content to the website is probably the longest process when we're building our websites um, to make sure everything is aesthetically pleasing and making sure everything is pretty much consistent throughout the entire website. So. I believe probably the fastest that we can build a website now is probably in less than a day. We pretty much just get all our content outlined together, do a little bit of STO research based on their competitors area, put that outline into the system, and then we can define if we want to use Zimwriter or what we typically use is this workflow right here, which allows us to define the outline, but it's going to allow us to have total control on each section of the website, how many words how it's written, if it's gonna be for persuading, or if it's gonna be more for information. It's gonna allow us to get very specific on every single section. This is our preferred method, but somebody asked me if you could use Zimwriter, and I said, why not? I've already built a couple workflows that would split stuff apart, or like the local buffet, even the website, when everything wasn't added as far as AI images with stability. We would split everything apart in the blogs, and then, you know, go and have images added to Airtable and then load everything into a blog post in WordPress. So if you're interested in learning more about how this process can work for your business, let me know in the comments below and be more than welcome to walk you through a little bit more and get on a one-on-one -on -one call if you need it. All right. Thank you.